Skeletons of the Marital Closet by Wen Tang Tang Chapter 1181 He was so direct that Gail was taken aback, not knowing how to respond. Before she could react, Sean had already held her hand. Let's go. She subconsciously followed him. After walking a few steps, she wanted to break free again. However, Sean held it even tighter. Gail, we are still married. Although her heart no longer belonged to him, her person still belonged to him. I know you want a divorce. I will find a way to stop Grandpa. But right now, with Nicole's matter, no. Sean did not turn his head, looked at the road ahead, and walked steadily. After a few seconds of silence, he said in a low voice, Please, be Mrs. Wood for a while longer. Hearing these words, Gail quickly raised her head and looked at his silhouette. When Shod said this, his tone was flat and normal. However, Gail could hear a bit of regret. He is Sean. When you have ever been so humble, such a retreat, only in front of her. As Mrs. Wood, how can she be wronged? High above the sky, surrounded by stars, the young mistress of a wealthy family with hundreds of billions of dollars. How many women dream of it? Gail replied softly. Then don't you feel wronged? Have you never felt wronged? Sean asked deeply. In this marriage between you and me, I am more than wronged. Sean pursed the corner of his lips deeply and fell silent. When the Civil Affairs Bureau forced me to marry you, when you were kind to Susan, when you killed our first child, when you doubted Sam and me, I am wronged. But you will never understand what wronged me the most, Gail said. Gail, what's wronged you the most? When I love you and you don't love me, when I'm tired and want to retreat, you pour all your love on me. There are some things that she did not get at the time, and when she did, she did not want it. At this time, Joshua had already run to the front of the car, urging, Uncle Sean, hurry up! I won't be able to buy pancakes any later. Thoughts were interrupted. Gail raised a smile. Here we are. Sean drove slowly all the way. After spending nearly an hour, he finally bought pancakes at a stall at a crossroad. The stall owners were planning to close their stalls. Boss, I want a pancake with no chocolate chips, Gail said. Okay, you are the last customer. The boss was very talkative, chatting while spreading his batter. Your family of three is really the most beautiful I have ever seen. The man is handsome, the woman is beautiful, and the child is so cute and smart, the boss said. Before Gail could explain, Joshua was already one step ahead of her. It's not a family of three. He is not my father. The boss froze a moment. Isn't he your father? That's right. He's just an uncle, I know. Joshua said. The boss looked at Sean and Joshua carefully by the light. He murmured, What's going on? They look like a father and son. Could it be that my eye are blurred? Or is the light too dim? Boss, the pancakes are going to be mushy, Gail said quickly. How good. The boss then looked away, packed the pancakes, and handed them to Joshua. Gail breathed a sigh of relief. She was really afraid that the boss would continue talking. Yum, it's delicious. It's so delicious. Do you want a bite? Joshua took a big bite. Gail shook her head silently. She was not hungry at all. Chapter 1182 The corner of Joshua's mouth curled down, almost crying. However, what could he done? It was a pancake he said he wanted to eat, and he had to finish it no matter what. It was all his own doing. Moreover, Sean really drove for an hour to buy him pancakes. He was simply flattered. 
Gil did not know that this scene was so warm in the eyes of the outsiders. In front of the steaming stall, she and Sean stood side by side with Joshua next to them, eating pancakes by mouthfuls. The corners of his mouth were covered with butter, and the boss was busy closing the stall. Until a rapid ringtone of the mobile phone rang. Sean answered the phone, Hello? The bodyguard voice was very flustered. Bad news, Mr. Wood. Natalie, she ran away. In the quiet night, Gail next to him could hear the voice from the receiver clearly. They looked at each other and their expressions immediately changed. What happened? How was it possible? Natalie was poisoned, took the sex potion again, and her heart was injured. Under the heavy surveillance of the bodyguards, such a weak woman ran away. Sean's face darkened. Trash! You can't even look after one person. Go punish yourself. Yes, yes, Mr. Wood. In addition, block all the exits of Sea City and send someone to guard them. If you see Natalie, immediately arrest her. As soon as he hung up the phone, he immediately walked in the direction of the car. He must return. With Natalie gone, things got even more difficult. How did she get away? He had to figure it out. I'll go with you. Natalie can just run away like this, Gail said. Sean's Adam's apple rolled. Okay, what about Joshua? This little kid. When Sean looked for Joshua's figure, he realized he had climbed into the back seat. I'll go too. You can't leave me behind. It's so dark in the middle of the night, Joshua said. Sean pursed his lips deeply. Yes, as long as you are not afraid. Why should I be afraid? I'm not scared, Joshua snorted. The car was speeding on the road. In the middle of the night, the hospital was very quiet and there were few people in the hall. The sound of Sean's leather shoes hitting the ground was very clear. He kicked open the door of the ward. Mr. Wood, the captain of the bodyguard was full of panic. His face was darker than the night. There are so many people guarding one person, but she disappeared? Did she, Natalie, fly away with wings? Or are you all blind? The captain replied, Mr. Wood, speaking of this, it's really, really weird. Speak, what's going on? Natalie has been lying in the ward quietly, neither making a sound or acting like a monster. We didn't see her move at night when we brought in the food. Until just now, I was worried that something had happened to her, so I deliberately went in and had a look. As a result, the woman lying on the hospital bed is not Natalie at all. It's her, the captain cried. The captain pointed to the thin woman standing beside him. Her? What do you mean? How did she get in? Who is she? Sean asked deeply. Chapter 1183 Mr. Wood, she is a nurse. When Mr. Yarn went in to see Natalie, she happened to change her dressing. Originally, I asked Mr. Yarn to enter first because you only gave him 10 minutes. After he comes out, the nurse will go in and change the dressing, the captain explained. But Mr. Yarn said it, it was all right, and they went in together. Before I could say anything, he took the nurse in and changed the dressing together. Then, ten minutes later, the nurse came out together with Mr. Yarn. I took a look inside and found someone on the hospital bed. I thought the person lying there was Natalie, so I didn't go in to check. Sean fully understood what was going on. He looked at the nurse. The nurse was crying. I don't know anything, Mr. Wood. I'm the victim. I just want to change the dressing. Just after changing the dressing, my neck suddenly hurt, and then I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I found myself in the ward. 
I knocked on the door and asked the bodyguards to let me out. Trash. It wasn't until the nurse knocked on the door that you found out that Natalie had already escaped in disguise, didn't you? Sean yelled angrily. The captain's head lowered. What a trickery. Lying. Mr. Wood, I swear, I really don't know anything. I was knocked out involuntarily. The nurse explained tremblingly. Sean raised his wrist and glanced at the time. Several hours had passed since Matthew visited Natalie. Wanting to catch Natalie would have a certain degree of difficulty. They would only pray she had not left town. As long as she was still in Sea City, Sean would definitely be able to catch her. Search the whole city. Any exit can't be missed. Sean gave the order. Immediately afterward, he issued a second order. Go and bring Mr. Yarn to me. When he said this, he took a look at Gail. Obviously, the reason why Natalie was able to escape smoothly was because Mr. Yarn contributed a lot. He gilded the nurse in and the nurse out. Such a good method. Such a strategy. So courageous. Gail also understood. Matthew helped Natalie escape. Why? Why did he do this? He clearly knew that Gail was his biological daughter, yet he dared to take such a big risk to help Natalie escape. What the hell was Matthew thinking? Mr. Yarn is really bad. Everyone let the bad woman go. Joshua's voice sounded. Joshua also saw through this little trick at a glance. Uncle Sean, you can't let him get away, Joshua said. Gail covered his mouth. Okay, don't make any more trouble. What could they do? Torture Matthew? Force him to reveal Natalie's whereabouts? That is Gail's biological father. How could she? Unconvinced, Joshua pulled Gail's hand. You don't understand. It was Mr. Yarn who helped Natalie pretend to be a nurse and helped her escape. After speaking, he closed Gail's hand again and covered his mouth. Gail sighed bitterly. Of course, she understood. It was just that she was even more sad. Joshua looked at Gail's expression, then at Sean's gloomy expression. She was still too soft-hearted and kind. Look at Sean. He is decisive in killing and attacking, with a clear distinction between what he loves and what he hates. And when he stands here, his aura is strong enough to make people dare not look directly at him. Chapter 1184 Hmm, he dealt with it as a real man, as expected of his father. Sean's cell phone kept ringing. The latest search situation was being reported from all directions. Natalie was not found at the exit of the expressway. There is no record of Natalie's ticket purchased at the airport. Checked the surveillance and Natalie got into a taxi after leaving the hospital. Sean frowned deeply. Could it be Natalie had left Sea City? Several hours had passed. Although Sea City is big, two hours was enough to get out of the city. Sean ordered. Continue to guard the exit and check all the entry and exit monitoring after Natalie escaped. Yes, Mr. Wood. Once you find it, lock the license plate and track it all the way to the ends of the earth and chase it back. The voice fell, and there were chaotic footsteps outside. Immediately afterwards, Matthew walked in under the guard of the bodyguards. Matthew's expression was calm without any sign of panic, as if he had expected all this long ago and was only waiting for this moment to come. For him, as long as Natalie escaped smoothly, he was not afraid, nor did he care. Mr. Wood, Mrs. Wood, Matthew shouted and took another look at Gail. Sean asked directly, Where is Natalie? She's gone. You admitted it quickly enough. Matthew replied, The nurse followed me in and out, and then she disappeared. Obviously, I took her away. 
there is no point in denying it. Where is she? Hand her over, Sean said in a tight voice. Since I helped her escape, how could I let her come back and fall into your hands? That's a dead end. Her life is ruined, Matthew said. Natalie is still in city. My subordinates have checked every exit and there is no trace of her. Sean stared deeply into Matthew's eyes. Matthew still said the same thing. I don't know anything. If I know, I won't say it. He was determined to protect Natalie. Matthew, did you consider my feelings when you did this? Gail said. Matthew did not dare to look at her, nor did he dare to speak. Today, you asked to see Natalie. I was the one who got Sean to agree to let you meet her. I still remember you said Nicole would be your granddaughter, and you also hoped that Nicole would wake up soon. Gail's voice trembled slightly. Why did he let Natalie go after saying such a thing? Where did Matthew put her? Did he value Nicole? It was not clear what happened so far. How about Mary, who was recuperating in the ward and kept in the dark? So many people could not be compared to Natalie. Matthew lowered his head. I don't want to do this either. But Mr. Wood will not let Natalie go. I can just sit and watch her being tortured. Death would be better than life. Then you will be able to watch Nicole bewitched? Cognition confused? Can't recognize me for the rest of your life? Won't call me mommy? Matthew was speechless and stammered. He knew what choice he had made, but he had to. Chapter 1185 It was because only in this way could Natalie be saved. The rest, he could not control so much now. And even you knew that I was your biological daughter, and Natalie was your adopted daughter, you still chose her. In your heart, the adopted daughter is more important than your own daughter? Gail continued. This was what hurt Gail the most. Her biological father, after weighing the pros and cons, chose Natalie regardless of her feelings. Not to mention Nicole. Why? Was blood thicker than water? Mrs. Wood, you are different from Natalie, Matthew said. Yes, it's different. She is her, I am me. You don't understand what I mean. You have Mr. Wood. You have a daughter. You have the warm family to take care of you. You have love, family, and friendship. You are very rich, and you can have whatever you want. But she has nothing left. Matthew tried to explain. Matthew became more and more aggravated as he spoke. She only had one life. I will help her keep that life, let her live well, instead of being tortured every day like a walking dead. She was so thin that only skin and bones were left, and her body was covered with bruises, large and small scars. Old wounds were not healed, and new wounds were added. Since she was a child, she has never suffered such hardships. I really can't stand it. Gail bit her lip. She used to think that Sean was the only man who hurt her the most in her life. Now it seemed that she spoke too soon. Matthew hurt her even more. Moreover, she still had no way to retaliate. How would Gail take revenge? Torture Matthew? That is her father. It was the one who gave birth to her. So you can favor her with peace of mind, right? You know that you are my father, and I can't touch you, and neither can Sean, right? Gail asked. Gail's heart kept heaving, simmering with anger and sadness. Her only consolation was that, fortunately, Matthew was the only one involved in the whole process. Mary had no idea.
If the two of them worked together to let Natalie go, it would be a fatal blow to Gail. I won't let her go. I will definitely find her. No matter how long it takes or how difficult it is, I will find her. She, Natalie, can just die after making a mistake, Gail said through gritted teeth. Mr. and Mrs. Wood, when Natalie stays in a safe place and starts to live again, I promise I will let her tell me the way to cure the spell and hand over the antidote. I will let Miss Nicole regain her sobriety, Matthew said very sincerely. As for now, I can't let you guys find her. I'm really, really sorry. Sorry. Matthew bowed deeply. Gail took two steps back and turned her head away, not wanting to see him at all. In Matthew's heart, Natalie was far more important than her. Oh no, to be precise, she was far better than her and Nicole. Gail did not understand what made Matthew place so much importance on an adopted daughter, and he would make the decision even if he risked his family and life. At this time, Joshua's childish voice sounded. I'm sorry, do we need the police? Matthew glanced at him. A child like that should not be taken seriously at all. However, Matthew underestimated Joshua. This was no ordinary kid. Chapter 1186 Don't apologize because Natalie can't escape. According to the feedback from Uncle Sean's subordinates, I judge she must still be in town and not left yet. Joshua said, Joshua's sentence was well-founded and logically clear. Matthew, when you ran away with her, you already guessed that once Uncle Sean finds out, he will definitely send people to all the entrances and exits of Sea City as soon as possible to look for Natalie. If Natalie leaves Sea City, they can find her by following the license plates and surveillance. All your efforts will be in vain at that time, and she will be arrested again. So, your plan must be to let Natalie stay in Sea City, wait for it to die down, wait for the people at the entrance and exit to withdraw, and then leave without anyone noticing. Only in this way can you escape successfully, and she will not be followed. Matthew's face turned pale. But he immediately scolded. What nonsense are you talking about? See, although you deny it, Matthew, your expression says it all. Joshua grimaced. You. Actually, I was talking nonsense just now. But after seeing your expression, I knew I had guessed it right. Natalie is here. Joshua shrugged. Matthew was furious and was about to go forward to catch Joshua immediately. Joshua moved extremely swiftly and quickly hid behind Sean. He struck out half his head. I'll keep guessing. Where will you let Natalie hide? Who would dare to take her in and protect her? So, Joshua purposely paused mysteriously for a few seconds and then smiled. Natalie is hiding in Matthew's house. Matthew could not hide his expression anymore. He was full of panic and kept cursing. Where did you come from? Shut up! Shut up! Sean's big hand fell on Joshua's head. He very much agreed with Joshua's guess. Matthew stopped struggling. Your plan failed, Sean said in a deep voice. Surround the Yarns family's villa right away and search it inside and out. Find Natalie, Sean said. Yes, Mr. Wood. The bodyguards act immediately. Matthew's face was almost as white as paper. His legs were trembling and he was almost unable to stand still. How could his plans get exposed so quickly? He had no way to contact Natalie now. It was estimated that at this time, 
She was still foolishly hiding in the Yarn family's villa, waiting for an opportunity to leave. Natalie would only be met by Sean's bodyguards. It's all yours. It's all your fault. Where did you come from? For a child your age, you sure can talk nonsense and cheat. Matthew raised his finger and pointed at Joshua. My parents taught me to be so smart, and I can see your intentions. A bad person at a glance. Matthew was speechless for a moment. You, you. What about me? Uncle Sean, did I do it right? Is it great? Joshua stuck out his tongue. Sean gave an affirmative answer. Very good. I knew it, and you agree with my guess, Joshua said. Smart men always want to go together. Come on, give me a high five. Sean was very cooperative. The two of them gave a high five simply and smartly. This pair of father and son disliked each other, but at a critical moment, the two surprisingly agreed and thought the same. Sean also guessed that Natalie was still in C City. However, he did not expect Matthew would hide her directly in his house. It was estimated that the most dangerous place is the safest place. Unfortunately, Matthew miscalculated. Chapter 1187 Joshua did not play by the rules, and with his unconstrained thinking, he guessed right at once. Seeing that the plan was revealed, Matthew was extremely anxious. No, don't catch Natalie. Mr. Wood, I beg you, please let her go. I am willing to bear everything for her. I am the one who can't teach my girl. Sean looked indifferent. Matthew gritted his teeth and knelt down with a plop. The man was rich and had an ego. Not to mention Matthew was so old. When has he ever been so humble? However, for Natalie, he could only humble himself. Mr. Wood, let her live. She's still young. She made a mistake this time. Give her a chance to correct it. Matthew begged bitterly. It was an image of a father who has broken his heart for the sake of ignorant children. Sean looked at him condescendingly. I have given Natalie a chance, and more than once. As long as she makes Nicole regain consciousness, other matters can be discussed. But how did she fare with it? I can go, persuade. No need. No one can give her a chance. Sean interrupted him. Matthew was startled. His whole body went limp. Then he looked at Gail again. Gail met his gaze. Matthew changed the direction of his knees, straightened up again, and knelt upright toward Gail. Mrs. Wood, I beg you. Since Mr. Wood was not willing to accommodate, he would beg Gail. Women are soft-hearted. Besides, he is Gail's biological father, and he has knelt down. Gail subconsciously stepped back. It was ridiculous for a father to kneel down to his daughter. How could she afford it? For my sake, Mrs. Wood, please give Natalie a way out. I'm just a poor father. Matthew begged for mercy. Gail replied, I am just a poor mother. I want to save my child. At this moment, Mary's helpless voice came from the door. What are you doing? They saw Mary holding the door frame, wearing a loose hospital gown, and looking at the scene in disbelief. Her husband was kneeling on the ground at this moment. The person he knelt in front of was Gail. What happened? Before, when Mary went to kneel, she just thought that she was a woman, so she knelt on her knees. No matter what Sean did, it was impossible for her to convince him. If she knelt, Matthew did not need to kneel. Some things have to be done by women. 
However, Matthew still ended up on his knees. You came just in time. Quickly, come with me and beg Mr. Wood and Mrs. Wood to let Natalie go. Matthew saw her, and his hope was rekindled. It was only then that Mary remembered that this was Natalie's ward. So, what about her? There was no sign of her on the hospital bed, and she was not seen among the many people standing in the ward. Where did Natalie go? Chapter One Thousand One Hundred Eighty-Eight. Could it be Sean attacked her? Is Matthew going to plead for mercy? Natalie has escaped. It was your husband who helped her escape. He tried his best to help Natalie escape. Are you going to kneel down with him and beg us to let Natalie go? Gail looked at Mary. Mary gasped. She stared blankly at Matthew. How could you do such a thing? Am I not doing this for Natalie? You can persuade her. You can care about her and feel sorry for her, but you can't let her run away. If she runs away, what will Nicole do? What will Gail think? What's more, she's also poisoned. Mary said, "I can't control that much any more. If Natalie doesn't leave, she will either die or life will be worse than death." Mary shook her head again and again. "You are confused, Matthew." After doing this, Gail's heart would be broken. Mary is a woman, and women understand women. She understood Gail's sadness. Mary looked at Gail and wanted to say a few words of comfort, but she did not know what to say. It was because, while she also loves Natalie, she was not as confused as Matthew. Boss. The intercom rang again. Sean responded, "Speak." I found Natalie. She's in the basement of the yarn home, the bodyguard reported. Bring her here immediately. All right, Mr. Wood. There was a noisy voice from the intercom, and Natalie's scream could be vaguely heard. Don't touch me! Don't! I'm not going. Let go. This is my home. Why do you break in? Help me, Dad! Dad, help! Matthew stared at the walkie-talkie, listening to Natalie's heart-piercing roar. His facial features were about to twist together. His eyes were full of distress. Tears kept rolling in his eyes. He wished he could rush home right now to protect Natalie. Sean observed his subtle expressions deeply. Strange, insisty. Matthew could be regarded as a well-known figure with a certain status. However, Matthew's behavior was particularly incomprehensible. Yes, Natalie is his daughter. Although she is an adopted daughter, she has been loved for more than twenty years. Matthew has long regarded her as his own daughter, which is understandable. However, Matthew seemed to be confused. He is not like Mary, although he is distressed. He is very clear about the bottom line when it comes to principles. Matthew blindly took care of Natalie. He even did not hesitate to help her escape, and he knew that if he did so, he would be discovered by Sean and Gail. But he has to do it too. No expense spared. Why? Sean thought deeply. There must be some unknown secrets. Mary rubbed her eyes and said nothing. Matthew clenched his fist. His face was full of remorse and annoyance, but he did not blame himself. He did not care about Gail's feelings at all. Gail twitched the corners of her mouth mockingly. Was it because the paternity test had not yet come out? Her father was still on guard against her. And he still did not fully believe in her identity. Was it because her father just loves Natalie? He thinks Natalie is more important than her. Gail bit her lower lip. 
using the pain to divert her attention, forcing herself not to think too much. Chapter one thousand one hundred eighty-nine. She squatted down. Joshua, hey, it's late. I'll ask the bodyguard to take you back. Okay. I want to be with you. I don't need you to accompany me now. I have Uncle Sean here. You should go to bed, and you can see me when you wake up. Gail said. Joshua asked, but you should sleep too. Where could Gail sleep? I still have something to do. I have to deal with this bad woman, Natalie. Be obedient. Gail patted his head. She did not want Joshua to see this, as he was still young. Moreover, Natalie would be here soon, and she did not want Natalie to see Joshua. What if Natalie guessed that the person who poisoned him was Joshua? Joshua nodded reluctantly. Okay, then you have to take care of yourself. Uh huh. Joshua was still worried and turned around and tugged on Sean's sleeve. Hey, sir. Yes. I handed over the big beauty to you. You have to protect her well. Did you understand that? Joshua urged. Sean replied slowly. Who dares to bully my woman? I mean, you bullied her. I can't bear to bully her either. Joshua nodded in satisfaction and left with the bodyguard. His existence tonight was considered a great achievement. Otherwise, it would not be so easy to catch Natalie. Half an hour later, Natalie was escorted into the ward by the bodyguards. Her hair was disheveled, and the clothes on her body were torn in pieces, as if she was covered with a piece of rag. As soon as the bodyguard let go, she fell to the ground like jelly, unable to get up for a long time. Matthew rushed forward. Natalie, it's my fault. It's my fault. If you had planned more carefully, you would have escaped smoothly. He really felt sorry for Natalie. He removed his coat, put it on her, and hugged her tightly. What deeply fatherly love! Matthew kept blaming himself, saying, "It's all my fault. Don't be afraid, Natalie. I am here. Even if I risk my life, I won't let them torture you again." He did not feel sorry for Gail at all. At this moment, Gail's heart was completely cold. Even if Matthew is her biological father and is related by blood, but a father whose elbow is so bent. How could Matthew's behavior be compared to Peter's? A father is not as good as an adoptive father. Natalie hugged him and wept bitterly. Dad, it's me who got you in trouble. It's my fault. Natalie, the father and daughter cried together, and the posture of relying on each other was really touching. Gail watched coldly. Gail, are you okay? Sean lowered his voice deeply. I am all right. There's nothing wrong with it. I am just taking advantage of this time to take a good look at it and remember it firmly, so that I won't have any soft-hearted thoughts in the future. She replied. What Matthew had done completely chilled Gail's heart. Mary stood beside her. Angry and helpless, you too. What should I say, Matthew? It's fine if Natalie just admits her mistake. Why are you still messing around? Can running away solve the problem? It will only aggravate the problem. Staying here won't solve the problem. I was forced to come up with such a solution, Matthew retorted. Chapter One Thousand One Hundred Ninety. Mary stomped her feet again and again. That was such a bad idea. It hurt Natalie, hurt you, and hurt Gail. Okay, don't talk about it now. The most urgent thing now is to think about how to keep Natalie safe. This was the most important thing to Matthew. Wrong. 
the most important thing is for Natalie to undo the spell on Miss Nicole. Let her admit her mistakes and apologize, and ask Mr. and Mrs. Wood to forgive her. Mary corrected him. Mary blushed and reprimanded. Did you treat Natalie as a daughter? Of course, I regarded her as my daughter. I have taught her homework since she was a child. I want to save her because I still recognize her as a daughter. Mary's intention was to make Natalie stand upright and accept the beating, to bow her head, to admit her mistakes, correct them, pay a heavy price, and repent. However, Matthew's rescue was blindly eccentric. I don't think you recognize Natalie's daughter anymore. It was a lie to keep saying that you treated Natalie as if you were your own daughter. Matthew snorted coldly. I never lied to you. Can't you see how I have treated Natalie all these years? Who knows if you're acting or pretending? Mary shook her body violently. It turns out that all these years, my cultivation and care of Natalie, in your eyes, are all acting. That was too hurtful. Mary cared for her husband and child and worked hard to be a good housekeeper. Everyone in Sea City had always praised her as a good wife and a good mother. Who knew? Matthew's words negated her years of hard work. Dad, don't talk about mom like that. She treats me very well. I know that. Natalie said, Natalie was not completely heartless. You can act for a while, but not for decades. Mary was always gentle and kind. She never beat or scolded her, and she remembered it in her heart. Natalie, don't be fooled by her. She is always superficial and always remembers that you are just an adopted daughter. The most important thing in her heart is her precious daughter. She has been like this for many years, Matthew said. Matthew's words made Sean frown again and again. It seemed that in Matthew's heart, Natalie was far more important than Gail, who was his biological daughter. Up to now, he had made no secret of it, directly showing his favoritism and importance to Natalie. On the contrary, Mary's behavior made her look like a normal mother. Mary slowly squatted down in front of Matthew. With tears in her eyes, she said, My precious daughter? That's your daughter too. She's your own flesh and blood. It's the child of the two of us. I know. Am I wrong to look for my lost daughter? While I was looking for her, I didn't treat Natalie badly. Matthew looked at her. Yes, before Gail appeared. You were really kind to Natalie, but now you know that Gail is your biological daughter and your sweetheart is finally back. You have long wanted to abandon Natalie and welcome Gail back. In addition, if Natalie makes such a mistake, you will get rid of her. You can't wait to get rid of her as soon as possible. And how nice Gail is. She is Mrs. Wood. She has a noble status. Mary opened her mouth halfway, completely speechless. She could not believe that her husband, who had slept with her for so many years, actually looked at her like this. The relationship between husband and wife for many years was completely shattered instantly.